Hello and welcome to Ariva Academy Online Administration Webinar. My name is Manny and I'll be your trainer for today's session, How to Create Volunteer Application Form Web Pages. As a reminder, we're recording today's session and will be available for viewing in about two to three days on the website. You can find these recorded sessions by heading to ariva.com, selecting services in the main menu, and then selecting Academy from the drop-down menu. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So today, as we said, we're gonna be taking you through the volunteer kind of form setup and this one is going to be specifically a general volunteer form setup so this is you know any volunteers that you have that are interested in signing up looking to be part of your organization but maybe not for a specific job just yet you know just signing up showing their interest what they're excited about maybe ask them some questions like are you a high school student and some other important ones from a volunteer standpoint that may be really important from you for you guys so once they are imported in and they come in on the form, they you know come in just like a normal donation and get imported in in the online transactions area, they will end up directly in the volunteer section. And from there, this is the area that you can go ahead and search by those user-defined fields we're going to set up, such as are you a high school student or any of the tags that we're going to make available. This, was, this is what gives us the ability to you know, then pull reports that we need to reach out to these individuals and then get them to sign up for the specific jobs, which is great. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start with is the tags themselves. So directly in the volunteers, volunteer manager, we were just looking at the volunteer side of things. All the way to the right, we have tags. Any tag we set up here on the database side in the volunteer side of things, it's gonna show up on the volunteer form we set up and we'll be able to enable and show which ones we want to the public. All right, so simply add it here, boom, and when we look at the form, we're gonna see it to be able to enable it. So to add a tag, you just simply click the plus sign, select the tag category, and you can see we have five categories you can choose from, as well as enter the tag code and the tag description. The description is what is gonna be shown to the public when this question is asked or this tag is selected. All right, so you'll see we have locations, jobs, and you're going to see these when we turn these on. You can see them all on the list. We have about 60 tags on our side. You guys won't have as many. You just maybe blank to start, and then as you enter them, it'll fill up nice. The other thing we're going to take a look at is the user-defined fields. So those are going to be bio user-defined fields that we can ask an individual volunteer that signs up. These volunteer fields can be shown here, so you can see them right here, you know, high school student, high school attended, languages spoken things like that. As well, they are bio fields, so they are on the person's profile as well. So when you're setting the UDF up, you're going to see here, you know, under the customized page layout, here's all our user-defined fields. And as we add them, we can decide if we want to drag them internally into the database side of things, you know, and see them when we're editing a user and all that good stuff. Not needed. If we don't want to, we can just simply, you know, push them to the left and leave them in the do not show and just use them online and just use them for the volunteer side of things, which is great. All right, so once your user-defined field is added, wonderful, it will then just show up again to be enabled and turned on and shown to the public on the actual form side. All right, so those are our two main fields that we're gonna be looking at. Uh, and when we set up, you're gonna see a really play an important part in uh, setting this form up. So now we're gonna go ahead and head over to the online administration side. You know, Once we have our tag set up, our user-defined field set up, great. We simply click on online administration. It brings us to that sign in. And then once we sign in, we can just simply head to volunteer web pages, all volunteer opportunities, and click right on it. As soon as we do, you will see a list of all your volunteer opportunities you guys have currently active. This can include specific job forms, which we're going to be covering in the next academy, as well as if you have multiple general signups or you know using volunteer for any other reason. So once we're here to create a new form, we're just simply gonna go ahead and say add new. Once we say add new, you can see here we have a create schedule checkbox. This is only gonna be used when we are setting up those uh, you know, single job registration forms. Hey, you know, you're registering for this job on this date at this time. Great, what this does is ensure that we create a schedule and send it down to the database along with that registrations information. All right, so for a general sign-up form like we're covering today, do not check the schedule box, not needed. Here, we can go ahead and just give it a name. So we'll just call it something simple, general volunteer sign-up. We can add a display image if we want. Um, I'll leave it blank for now. Actually, we have one. I just put a picture of kids, that's perfect. And down below, we can select the 
category we want the volunteer opportunity to go into. So I'll just go ahead and say volunteer application. This helps segregate the listing of volunteers, but if you're not worried about the listing and you're just linking directly to the page, you don't really have to worry about category. Our end date and start date, we do have to set a time and uh, kind of a start and end time. Usually for a general sign up, what I suggest is the date's gonna be hidden. So we can just say, you know, January 1st, 2020, the beginning of the year, no one's gonna see this. And we can set this back to, you know, sometime in like 2030. That way we don't have to worry about re-updating this form. Of course, if you wanted to do general sign up for this year and then next year update the form, then of course you can set those start date and end date for that, that time and date. Here you can, again, just simply hide the date. No one's gonna see this. We just don't have an infinite option just yet. So just simply putting that date really spread out is works just great. Online registration ends, same thing. We're just gonna go ahead and set it to 2030 just to match the end date and time as this will be the last time we can take a registration on this form. All right, everything else looks good. On success redirect, just like our other forms, if you check whatever URL you place in here, when they successfully register, will be redirected to that page or link. Enable tell a friend, account information not needed here. Role, this may come in handy. Remember, this is a people tag that's coming directly from the database. So you can always say, you know, online registered volunteer. And, and, and it really is just a tag on a person, uh, which is important. All right, the description here, we can add anything we want. Um, I'll just kind of copy some text I have over on the right. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and simply center and make it bold, perfect. And then as we scroll down, we can add a location or we can simply hide it, it is not needed. Um, and then under below, we have additional information and usually just your volunteer coordinator's contact info is great there. All right, and then scroll through, the last step is the actual registration option. Since this is gonna be just a general sign up, what we usually suggest is putting something as simple as this. By checking this box, I am expressing my desire to volunteer. The volunteers are gonna be unlimited. It's not gonna have anything of that sort. So you just kind of set this up. When we come back into the form, it's gonna be when we can set up the rest of our options. So we just simply say save here, say okay. And now as we scroll down, we will see I ha we have our general volunteer sign up. So it is in draft mode. So now when we go back into it, Click on settings again, you're gonna see we get a bunch more settings. So the first initial form setup, nice and simple, and then we get a little bit of a more bulk setup here um, once we get into the form again on the second time. So scrolling down again, most of our setup is already there, which is great. And now you can see right under that send reminder area that we were looking at, we have the volunteer tag section. And also we have some nice options up here for the actual registration option. So we're gonna hide the show slots, we're gonna say unlimited, perfect, and we are good to go now. All right. We don't need to send a reminder as this is just a general sign up. If again, it is a job schedule form, which we'll be looking at here uh, in the next academy, then the reminder really does come in handy, which is great. So we're just gonna go ahead and say show there, and we're just gonna change this to volunteer preferences. Uh, we call it tags as that's what you guys see them in the database, but feel free to update those titles to your liking. All right, so we'll just go ahead and as we scroll down, you can see we have volunteer jobs. This is that first category. Down below it, um, you can see all the individual job tags that were created. So if we want this whole category to show, then we just set it to show and kind of leave it checked as we saw. And then we can just simply turn on the jobs that we want these individuals to sign up on. So again, all of these were added already. So we can just turn on a couple, uh, we'll say, you know, a couple of those and good to go. As we scroll down, we're gonna see all the other categories as well. So here's the location. So we can say, yeah, we got location one, two, and three that we added. And here are the skill tags that we can go ahead and turn on a couple of those. And we don't have to turn on all of them. Again, it will show all tags from your system, but you may only wanna show a couple to the general public. As you keep going down, we have interest tags. We'll leave those off this time. And you'll see here, very straightforward and easy. We have our personal on behalf of an organization, just like our donate forms, gender and birthday. You may want to ask to a volunteer. This will update their bio information and not you know, a UDF, which this is great. Go side by side with all the other birthdays you've entered. Scroll down our contact preferences. And then last but not least on the volunteer form, we have the bio UDF. So these are basically additional questions right and you can kind of label this however you like 
setting it to mandatory means that it displays always. If you don't set it to mandatory, it means they have to check the box to answer the additional questions. Okay. Down below is where you will actually turn those questions on to show to the public, as well as decide which questions you want to be mandatory. So again, that mandatory up top is a display thing, you know, just to display the whole additional questions area. And then our actual mandatories down here are going to be for the questions themselves. So we can say, you know what? Yeah, I like these questions. Are you a high school student? Year of graduation? Perfect. References, languages. We can say those are all great. Wonderful. And a high school attended like that one. And we can make them all mandatory if we want. Uh, you know, go ahead and simply fill all that information. Perfect. Now, each of those questions will have to be answered by the individual. Last but not least, we have the confirmation message. This one works great and can come in handy on the volunteer side. Um, when a user selects submit on a registration, you see this little pop-up box that says your request will be processed. Do you want to continue? If we enable that confirmation message, whatever we type in the box, will show in place of that little pop-up message and it'll be a yes or no question. So what I'll do is I'll just say acceptance custom and just so you guys can see the little bit of change of text. And then of course you guys have full control over this area. You can put whatever text content you like in there. All right, once we're done, we're just gonna go ahead and say publish. Absolutely, and now our volunteer registration page is complete. So if we go ahead and we just visit our public page, We'll copy that link and always remember you can use incognito window or a private window to view the forms as a logged out user, you know, really quick and easy without having to sign out and sign back in. All right, so give it a second to load and then we'll find our published form in that list. Wonderful, there's our general volunteer sign up. Go ahead and click right on it. Great, and as we scroll down, you can see this is our form that we created. So perfect, ready to go. We can simply hit our share option. This will be the direct link to this form always. So you can take this link, link it up to your website, you know, give it to your web devs, link it on Facebook, other social medias that allows individuals now to generally, you know, sign up to be a general sign up volunteer for your guys' organization, which is great. As you scroll through, you can see it's just simply them checkboxing the preferences that they're interested in, saying, no, I'm good at data entry, event coordination, as well as music. I can work at location one and location two but definitely not location three, and I'm great at these couple of skills. Wonderful, then they can go ahead and fill out the rest of their information, as well as then answer those additional questions we set up. Again, bio UDFs that will be attached directly to that profile. As well, when we look in the database, we can always see that, you know, are you a high school student? As well, pull a filtered report based on that. Hey, I need to go ahead and pull all high school students that went to this high school then we can simply reach out to those individuals for a specific scheduled job we have. All right. And last but not least, here's that submit option. So you can see here, once we hit submit, there's that cost, custom pop-up message that looks a little bit different than what we saw earlier. So again, whatever you type in will be what appears here. So you could put a nice paragraph of text, you know, by clicking yes, you're agreeing to all this above and blah, 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 you know, and all that great stuff. All right, fantastic. And now that is the form setup itself. So the last thing I'll show you guys is the actual notifications and how you guys can update those. So just simply head right back to the form, click on settings and once in settings mode, on the left hand side of the form here, we're gonna see a notifications area. And once we click that, that will be the notifications for this volunteer form. All right, so as we scroll down, you can see we have all the different notifications that we're looking at. The registration of volunteer will be the main one that is sent in. The others, you may not be using them in this instance as it's not a scheduled job. So just the registration of volunteer and the volunteer registration to admin, which will be directly to you guys. You know, what type of information you may want on the admin notification. And of course, all that will be fed to the database where you can pull reports and all that good stuff. So the main important one, the one to the volunteer that you may want to update, make any changes to, you know, before you take your form live. Once you're done here, simply say save. Great. And the next registrant to sign up, will see your newly updated notification. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and a happy Thanksgiving.